Well, hey there, and welcome to my channel. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I'm the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse in beautiful Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I am just tickled pink that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. You guys have really been liking those Dollar Tree hack videos that I've been doing lately, so I try to come up with something a little bit different, and today we're going to do glassware. Some of these are just hacks and different ways that you can use the glassware that you may not think of every day. And then some of them are beautiful DIYs, but I hope you like them. Let me know what you think and let's get into the video. For DIY number one, you wanna get yourself some type of a storage caddy from the Dollar Tree, of course. Now this color is new to my store for the fall. I like the gray color, but I want it black, so I wanted something that would be really quick and easy to paint. And then I got three of their taller glass jars. You wanna make sure that you clean these up really good with alcohol. You don't want any kind of fingerprints or anything like that on those. And I clean all my glass pieces with alcohol. I just wanted to let you know at the first of the video so I don't sound like a broken record. Okay, and then the next step on this one is, and you guys are gonna laugh at me, apparently I can't tape a straight line. I took my husband's electrical tape and so I started, I thought this is gonna be easy. I'm just gonna go about a third of the way up and I'm gonna put that line on there. Well. Crafty Kathy can't put a straight line on anything. I don't know what I was thinking. I can't cut a straight line. So what makes me think I could put a straight line around this jar? I don't know. But the way that I ended up having to get a line around this jar is to put a ruler up beside it and mark off two inches all the way around this cup and put a dot. And that is the only way, y'all, that I got my line to go straight across. I'm honestly embarrassed to even leave that in there, but I figured some of y'all might have the exact same problem as me, and I just want you to know you're not alone in this, okay? My original plan was to spray paint these, cause I much prefer to spray paint glass and plastic for that matter, but guess what? I didn't have any spray paint. This is my first video back since my vacation, and I was just way off course, y'all. And then y'all know I've been having some health issues and stuff, so I promise you I'm doing the best I can. So what I had to do was just grab some of the DIY black velvet, and any time that I do have to paint on glass, I always dab it on with one of these little dabbers, and I use chalk paint. Now, that's the best thing because I find that it does not come off as easily as, say, acrylic paint does. And I also grabbed that plastic bucket, and I was going to spray paint it too, but I just kind of dabbed it on because, you know, plastic is notorious for scraping off too. So I went ahead and got my whole bucket, and then I just grabbed some of that thick jute cord. And this is the kind that comes from Walmart. We're going to wrap the handles. All I do is just put a little bitty bead of glue, and then I just start wrapping, and I wrap and wrap until my little heart's desire, and when I get to the other side, I just put another little uh, bead of glue and call it a day. And I always take my tape off right before my paint has a chance to totally dry because I don't want to end up jerking any of that paint off of there or anything. Different people have different preferences, but I always just do it when it's still wet. It's probably because I'm really, really impatient too. And then I'm going to get some of this metal ribbon. And you guys, please be careful with this metal ribbon. Don't ask me how I know that it can cut your foot really bad. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, whatever could happen in this video, I'm telling y'all, it went down in this video. But anywho, I just am going to use a little bit of my heavy-duty glue, which is just Gorilla Glue Sticks. They're the best glue sticks ever, if you ask me. But anyways, I use just a little bit, and I put it on the band. I always like to start off in the middle of my band and then go around. Now, I'm just going to tell you, if you want these to stay on your glass, 
use like an E6000 or something that's going to be a strong bond. This is not going to last me. I would be surprised if this lasted a week on this cup. I'm just being totally honest. I'm just showing you for the video purposes to show you how to do it, you know, but I didn't really want it to stay on there forever because a lot of times I reuse my supplies because why keep buying cups and cups and cups if I can just pull these off, you know, and reuse them in a later video. So anyways, if you want them to stick, just use your E6000. But I went around there where my little black ends, and that's where I put my band at. And these are really pretty but I kind of wish I would have painted them black before I put them on there. But oh well, they still turned out pretty. But now for the best part, you get to see what it looks like. And I hope you like this one. Boy, it sure did test my patience. <laughs> I'd rather go here for a little critter and I love you so and I wanna take a ride and we'll bear it in mind I come and sit down with me in a rocking chair For DIY number two, now this one has been around since the dawn of time but I just think that I make it really pretty and I wanted to show you guys what I like to do quite often. I like to get me a large size plate and a saucer size, and of course they're clear. Now, these are some candlesticks that came out not too long ago at my Dollar Tree, and there's a small, medium, and a large. I only needed one of them, but I ended up using the taller one actually on this. Then you're gonna get you some really pretty fabric. I get this fabric at Walmart, and I can't remember if it's Pioneer Woman or the Waverly brand fabric, but it's at Walmart, and you get a pretty good amount of it for around $5. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to repeat myself about cleaning these, but it is imperative that you get all of the fingerprints off of these, especially off of the back, before you get started on this project. And what I do is I just lay my fabric down so I can see exactly how much I need. I give just maybe a little half an inch overhang on all the sides. And then I just cut my little slit in my fabric and then pull it. And it's going to rip all the way down the rest of the way for me. Now, we're going to need some Mod Podge for this. And I have different varieties of Mod Podge, but I'm just telling you, they're all pretty much the same to me. We've got the mat, and I even have some dishwasher. We're going to use the dishwasher safe one. If you let your piece cure for 28 days, you can actually put it in the dishwasher with that Mod Podge. And I've never had problem with it coming undone. So here's what I do is I lay my piece down. I make sure that I've got it, you know, enough to cover. And I just am going to take an old junkie brush and I'm going to put a good amount of Mod Podge down. Now, it you can't put too much Mod Podge on this project, but you can put too little. You want to make sure especially that those edges get coated really good. Now, here's what I do is I lay my piece down like you just saw and then I basically slather it with the Mod Podge. You see I'm putting a good amount here, and I work my way out from the center out all the way around. I even use my brush to kind of push down around those edges and my finger, and I rub it in, especially around those edges, because we want to make sure that those edges don't come up, because if they come up, your whole piece gets messed up. And you don't want that after doing all that hard work. So as you see, I just keep on brushing it on, honey. I just use a lot of it. I usually leave mine alone overnight. That way it has plenty of time to dry. But if you give it a couple of hours, that's usually sufficient to be honest with you. Now the last step that I do is I pick my piece up. And you see I've got still got Mod Podge on my brush, and I just go around those edges one more time, 
Because like I said, if nothing else fails, you make sure that you've got those edges down really well. Now, I did that with both of my pieces. I did that with the big plate and the small plate. And I left this in here just for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> because, hey, guys, look what I did. I put it on the wrong way. Now, I noticed it when I set it down to dry. And so what I did was just peel the piece up because it was still wet. And I flipped it right around there. And I added a little bit more Mod Podge and kind of reshaped it the right way. But I cannot believe that I made such a simple mistake. But hey, we all make mistakes. And that's how we learn. But I just thought I'd leave that in there because, you know... You ain't alone in this, like I said, honey. I have those days. Now, when your piece is absolutely dry and you make sure that it's 100% dry, you will know because, I mean, it's dry, but it's like stiff. Do you know what I mean? You will know when it's dry, just trust me. And I love these little scissors I got from Timu. They're very sharp and they're small. And you just kind of hold them at an angle and hold your plate at an angle. And you can make a perfect cut around this plate. And guys, just look how beautiful this fabric is. I can't get enough of it. I'm probably, even though these don't really look Christmassy, I may use these for my Christmas get-together with my family. I just think they're beautiful. Here's what the small plate looks like. It actually made it through. And then before I do anything else, I take that alcohol and I just wipe them off really good on the um, top portion of the plates. You want to make sure you don't have any fingerprints or any kind of residue there because we're about to put that candlestick on this and make it a beautiful little tiered tray. Now, I had taken that candlestick and I painted it with a DIY color called Petal Pusher because I thought that it was going to be perfect, you know, with that blue. But I just didn't like it. It just wasn't the right shade of blue. So I grabbed the blue iris, and guys, this is so pretty. This is probably one of the prettiest little trays like this that I've actually made, and it's because that fabric is just so gorgeous. So the way that I did paint that little candlestick was I used that little dabber. Like I said, anytime that I paint glass, I always just dab on some type of chalk paint. DIY paint is clay-based, but however, it does a perfect job, and it just, oh, that color is just gorgeous. I wanted this to be a permanent hold, so I grabbed my E6000, and wouldn't you know, like I said, if it could go wrong, it did in this video. This E6000 was almost full, but it was dried up, honey. It was dry as dry could be. So, I grabbed the Fix All Adhesive, and you get that from Dollar Tree. Now, it's made by Super Glue, and it's pretty much the same thing as E6000. So, I put a good little bit around that small portion and use this tiny little popsicle stick to kind of smear it out. It really doesn't take much of it because it is a good glue. And then I just take my candlestick, and I place it right in the very center of that larger plate. And then I'm going to take that Fix All Adhesive and put a little bit on the popsicle stick and go around the very top of the candlestick. And this time I'm going to flip the plates over. That way I can make sure I get it smack dab in the middle. I hope you like this one. I want to jump around when I think about yesterday. Your smile, your style so fly my oh my as time stood still i got the urge to steal a kiss and so i did now i'm embarrassed but just a little bit oh there All right, for DIY number three, my Dollar Tree actually had some of these in. 
it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes they have them and sometimes they don't, but they remind me of like Winnie the Pooh's little honey pot. I think they're really cute. One of my favorite things to do is to make my own candles. And I usually buy the soy wax from Hobby Lobby, but since we're doing Dollar Tree, we're just going to go all out with Dollar Tree. And I grabbed three of their candles in a color that I liked. Now, if you decide to fool with these candles in any way, whether you stick them in hot water on the stove or if you do them the heat method like I'm doing, and literally all I'm doing is using my very, very hot heat gun and I hold it up against it and it literally melts it. And it's a lot faster doing it this way than it is to heat up the water on the stove. But anyways, if you fool with these candles in any capacity, make sure that you protect your hands. I'm wearing these of gloves that are very old. I've had these for many years and I just use them for crafts now, but you cannot get burnt, you know, with these of gloves. They are really good and I've had mine for many, many years. But anyways, you just don't want to touch anything that's that hot because trust me, this gets very hot. It took me about five minutes to melt down all three of these candles. And I just pulled the wick out because we're definitely going to need that wick. Now, if I would have been thinking, I would have got th all three wicks out because it would have been smarter to have a three-wicked candle. And I'm sorry that my head's in the way, but it likes to make an appearance sometimes. And I just take a little dab of glue and put it down in the bottom of my little honey pot, and then I just stuck my wick down on it. And you see I'm holding the um, end of the can uh, wick up, and that way I don't lose it in there. And with my other hand, I'm protecting it so I can pour those hot candles in there. Now, by the time this DIY was over with y'all, I spilled one of those candles on me. And I thought my life had flashed before my eyes. But thank God it did not burn me. So just be very careful. And then I forgot to mention that any smell that you like to use, you know, essential oil, you can get them from the Dollar Tree or you can get this. I, I buy mine offline and I like the scent of lavender because it's calming <laughs> and I need calm in my life. So I just pour about 20 drops of it down inside my candle and stir it around really good. Then when it's fully dry, I'm just going to take and clip the wick. And like I said, I really wish I would have done three wicks, but one will do. And then I just pop the top right back on here. I wanted to decorate my jar, and I grabbed some of these transfers. Now, I got these transfers off Amazon last year around fall, the fall season, and I'm not even going to recommend these. These are the most terrible transfers. And I had forgotten about it because it's been a year since I used it. But they kind of crack and they come apart. They were cheap. Now, I'll give it that. For some reason, I think I spent about $10 for three sheets of these. They're really pretty. They're fall. But my goodness, it's not worth the $10 if you can't even get it to show up on your project, right? You know, so I would not recommend these to you guys at all. But anyways, I laid this one down and I put the word fall on here. And I started off with my little transfer tool and it was just so much easier to use my fingernail. So that's what I did. So on the other side, I decided to put one of my IOD transfers. I figured if I messed one side up, I could always just flip it around and use the other side. Now, with the IOD transfers, they are more expensive, but I'm telling you, sometimes you do have to pay to make sure, you know, you're getting good quality. And with the IOD, I have no complaints. I've, I love all of their products.
Moving into DIY number four, this is my favorite hack of the whole video. I bet that you've seen these small glass containers at Dollar Tree and just overlooked them. I'm going to show you a little way that I like to share my faith. You've probably heard the verse in the Bible before in Matthew 17 that says, For truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move here and there, and it will move, for nothing shall be impossible to you. Different versions say it in different ways, but that's the gist of it. What I do is I put the mustard seed in one of these little glass containers, and then I just put a little bit of glue on the cork and pop it back on. So now I have six different chances to share my faith just like that. What I do is I go to my printer and I make out six of these little verses here and I just cut them out and put them on cardstock. And if I feel that somebody needs this, or if I feel that I'm prompted to give it to a certain person, I give it to them and I give them this little verse with it. A lady did this for my husband back years ago, a little lady that we didn't even know and he carried that mustard seed with him for such a long time. So this year, my little grandson starts kindergarten. I went to Dollar Tree and I grabbed this little kindergarten card and I just put in there, we're so proud of you, Case Man. Never lose your faith because you can move mountains in Jesus' name. Love, Papa and Gran. Just a very simple message. And I hope that his mom and dad will hold on to this and someday when I'm long gone, he'll open that up and see it and it may mean something very special to him, and I just hope he knows how much he's loved. So what I did was take one of these round, um, like gift boxes that comes from the Dollar Tree and some of the paper shred. I just simply put the paper shred down in it and his little jar, and I'm gonna give that to him right before he starts school, and that way I can sit and explain exactly what that means, because he's only five, and I want to explain it in a way that he can totally understand where it came from. Or you can simply just take your little gift box, stick all six of those little bottles in there, and you can cut up your little verses and stick those in there and pass them out where you feel prompted or where you feel like someone needs that message for the day. Moving right along into number five, I found this glass over where all the candles and stuff is. There was a brown or like an amber color, and then there was this gray color. Well, I really like this kind of murky gray color, so I picked this one up, and you're also going to need one of those white incense burners, which was right beside it, and some of those river rocks. Now, don't blink, because you'll miss it. It's that easy. I just opened up my river rocks and I just put some on top of that incense burner and I didn't use a whole lot, just a small amount. And then I'm going to grab a tiny succulent that came out of something from the Dollar Tree years ago and then I just put the little glass on top like a cloche. Now I have this little knob, it's actually like a little drawer pull, and I'm just going to place it on the very top. And again, I'm just using hot glue because I don't want it to permanently be there. And you just made yourself the cutest little succulent cloche. I love it. She thinks I'm a little lazy. I think she's a little crazy. 
We like summer and we like spring and watching wrestling and ring. She ain't shy, she speaks her mind. Tough as nails and smooth as wine. We burn hot as kerosene. Baby, we got our own thing. She ain't skinny and I ain't tall. And now this last one is just a last minute hack. I actually saw this when I was turning out the lights to my craft room and I thought, my goodness, this is one of my most favorite hacks and I didn't even share it with them. I just buy this glass container and I stick my jute cord in there and I also stick my black thread in there and it comes out so easy. I never have to fight and look for my jute cord because it's always sitting on my desk very neatly placed. And then when I finish one roll, I just pop another one in and it's that easy. And guys, if you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much for coming and spending some time with me and crafting with me. I thought that you guys might like seeing the puppy swimming. This is actually the second time that they got in the swimming pool. Now, Roxy absolutely loves it, and she has to run around like a crazy little rat when she's finished to look for somewhere to dry off at. And Tuffy's just blissfully unaware of anything that's going on around him. So he's always happy. But guys, I love y'all and I thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed and give me a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget my videos are every Monday and Thursday at 730 right now for the summertime. And I love you guys and I will see you very soon. Lord willing. And that creek don't rise.